Hi everybody, welcome to another week on the To Roller In. I want to share a little bit of what's in store this week. Um, Emmanuel has done a great job so far with the project uh, with balancing, you know, what needs to happen every week when we go over to work, but also um, looking ahead to see what things need to happen for some of the big stuff that we have to get done with the house. And um, this week was one of those weeks where we worked on, uh, Emmanuel worked on some of the bigger things and um, also had some family time and some adventures. So enjoy the video. So early on, before we even purchased this home, we started getting a few quotes for some of our biggest ticket items. We wanted to make sure that we knew what we were signing on for and that we would have the resources to complete this renovation. At the top of the list was the roof. We spoke to a few different contractors to compare the cost of repairing the slate to the cost of replacing the slate with a metal roof. The advantages of keeping the slate roof were that it would be the closest to the original design of the house and slate tiles give the house more of the character and cosmetic appeal of the Victorian time period. The problem was that the quotes we were getting for slate rivaled the cost of the house. So the second option was to replace the slate roof with a metal roof. This would be a durable, low maintenance option. And even though it's not as attractive as slate, it is a material that was used in the same time period of the house and would still achieve some curb appeal by choosing a color that would complement the house. It was still going to be one of the biggest parts of the budget, but was within what we were willing to invest in repairing the roof. So from early on, we moved forward knowing that we would very likely be saying a sad goodbye to the slate roof. Then about a week ago, Emmanuel made an amazing find on social media. We were able to get an abundance of slate tiles from a seller about an hour away for next to nothing. Um, he will have to go back and make a second trip this week with some extra help to get the rest of it because there was so much it didn't all fit in the truck the first time. Another find we had this week was some slate. I actually picked up already about 6,000 of them pieces that we can use to fix our roof. I know in the past we said we would just do a metal roof, but that was mainly because it's so expensive to get slate and then also the labor of it. And now that we actually found all that slate, I think it actually will be cheaper for us to get somebody to fix our slate roof. So we're gonna go down that route, investigate it, and then we have to still pick up about three times the amount of slate that is here is still there and I already paid for it so I just have to pick it all up and it was really cheap I actually just paid $150 for it and really it was a steal because normally we would pay thousands and thousands of dollars for slate that of that amount and that quality we're expecting a fair amount of the tiles could be damaged but we are eager to revisit the logistics of restoring the slate roof in light of this great find we will keep you updated as we find out more. Have any of you had a similar experience? If you currently have a home with a slate roof or have restored a slate roof in the past, tell us about it in the comments. We would love to know what went well for you and what were the challenges that you faced. So I'm gonna try to explain how a slate roof works. The basic concept of slate roof is really they are all just flat tiles. And you can see a tile has two nail holes and then the rest of it is really just a very thin piece of slate uh, it's actually the material it's a type of stone that is very um, hard but also fragile because it is um, a lot of thin layers and so they cut them out of the stone make them uh, they split the slate into thin sheets and then you get basically one of those slate tiles. And so how it works is you have them all lined up next to each other. You always have a small little gap in between. because That's actually the gap where you have um, the spots for putting nails in. But basically how it works is you have 
the first layer here on the bottom, see, all next to each other, and then the second layer goes over it, and it overlaps about two thirds. So you can see I have about a third on the bottom here for from one tile, then I have the other two thirds on the top. And really what it is actually the measurement usually is it's half the distance from the nail hole to the bottom is where the next tile starts. So you can see I'm gonna put them right above it. Now what would happen is I would put nails obviously here and here and then here and here to hold these tiles from falling down. And then also the tiles when they're next to each other, they will um, hold each other so they are not racking against each other and stuff. So they are giving, uh, giving themselves more stability that way. And then what happens on the next layer, next layer again, you're gonna overlap again the same distance. And really I'm gonna show you on this, on this piece. So you have now the same overlap um, of two thirds. And you can actually see now I have this section where there's actually three tiles above each other. So it's not just a double tile, but it's actually a three, tip, uh, three, uh, three overlap on all the tiles, obviously besides all the way on the bottom of the roof. On the bottom of the roof, you're supposed to have a metal flashing, so that will help with the rain when it comes into these tiles. So in this case, then uh, the water can go in here and then it will just go underneath the metal. And so if we now look at how the water would run, is the water would come up on, the, on this tile, it would just right run, run, running down here. Obviously it would stay on this tile until um, the bottom. If it runs down into here, it obviously would just then continue down and it would go over one tile of another. When if it, roll, uh, if it rolls down here and it would go into this gap, it would actually pass these two tiles. But then if we look here, there is a full tile. And so it would just run out here again. And that makes a very solid roof and have no water penetrations. The one disadvantage of a slate roof like this is you can only install it in steep enough roofs. So that's also why you see often old roofs being very steep because in the winter if you have snow forming on your roof the snow and ice can push back into it so that's why you need a steep roof so that it actually doesn't penetrate upward upwards and it would potentially have the ability to go backwards if the roof was flat. You have the same issue with when it's high wind and high, um, so it's a storm that also has some wind, you could obviously push the, uh, the water up into your tiles and that's another reason why the roofs are very steep because you really don't have any physical barrier from the water going uphill besides the gravity. So that's the basics of how a uh, plate roof works. So one of the things that Elias and I did this week were um, actually we went to a camping trip together instead of uh, working on the house. Elias and I went together and it was his first time being out of the house by himself with me and did you have fun? <laughs> Good.
I know this was a little different type of video this week. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was informative enough of kind of our decision making process on like the roof. And then also hope you enjoyed the few little snippets of being part of our camping trip that Elias and I had together. And I hope to see you guys all next week. Bye.